Lagos former PDP stalwart Bada Morsi declares support for Pita Obi. And the PDP faction seeks Chairman Iyotia Ayu's removal. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. So what of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Lagos State, Mr. Babatunde Badamosi, on Friday defected to the Labour Party, declaring support for its presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi. Badamosi is a former governorship candidate of the African Democratic Party, a former Lagos East senatorial candidate for the PDP, and he made this known in a statement in Lagos. He said he was motivated that almost all youths who were not professional politicians or influencers for hire, had been popularizing Obi's presidential ambition. He also said that Obi had, over the years, shown himself to be creative, prudent, and a frugal administrator, as well as a trustworthy custodian of public funds. But I mostly also described the Labour Party vice presidential candidate as urbane, prudent, pr practical, and pr a principled politician. Well, joining us to discuss this is Babatunde Badamosi, a former PDP governorship uh, candidate who is now with the Labour Party. It's good to have you join us, sir. Great. Um, it, the, I think the first thing that everybody is would be talking about this evening is the fact that you have moved to the Labour Party. And I, apart from the fact that you say that you have seen a lot of young people declaring their support for uh, the presidential candidate, uh, what made you move from the main opposition in Lagos states, which is the PDP, to the Labour Party, um, wh which some would refer to as one that does not have the structure that the PDP has? Well, um Allow me to paraphrase Mr. Patel when he said that the structure is the people. And when he left BDP, what did he tell the structure of BDP left with him? Hmm. Um, at least in spirit, if not in person. Um, a lot of people in BDP have sympathy for Mr. Peter Green. And since he has chosen the Labour Party as a people, to realize this presidential ambition. Um, many of my former colleagues, uh, they might not say it publicly, but they want to vote for Vital Green and they will probably welcome him. Expect to see a deal of uh, cross country over the next few months, uh, especially in the Gilego, for. Uh, There's a lot of confusion in the party. I think. There are, I think, about 30 uh, cases involving uh, the PDP Labour State and the Federal High Court in Lagos as we speak. And these are mostly premised on the, the perceived injustices. Well, I say perceived, I think they're actually real. Really, got done to people um, during the last congresses and the primary conducted by the party. And lots of people have turned up on tickets that they never actually were in the primaries for. And some people actually lost the primaries and still headed up as the candidates. So the candidates that were elected at the primaries, or some of the primaries that were held, were the delegates that voted at those, at those primaries were not the ones that emerged at the World Congresses and the LGA Congresses of the party. And um, some of these people are in court and they're determined to get their pay, and they're, they're determined to get justice. You know? Now, before all this confusion came to be, I already did not participate in the gubernatorial primaries because I could see what was going to happen long before it did. There is a pattern in the Lagos State PDP where every single humanitarian candidate uh, since 2003 
has been somebody who crossed over from uh, whatever Ben Botinubu has been given. So in 2003, he was the late Punjab Williams. Uh, in 2011, he was my good friend of Friday Joshua. He was also somebody that crossed over from the local government. And uh, in 2015, he was uh, Mr. Jimmy Abadi, another of my big brothers, a well-known associate of uh, Mr. Tinubu. And again, in 2019, it was the same and Mr. Jimmy Abadi. So you can see the pattern. So when uh, the young man that is now the candidate made the announcement that he wanted to cross over to PDP, and I looked into the background of uh, the people that were packing, I realized that it was the same, you know, game all over again. It's wash, rinse, and repeat. Um, and I realized that anybody who came up to contest against it would just be knocking their head against the brick wall. But this is and this is but this way. but this is not new for any political party. And I'm talking about the major political parties in the country. This is not new. Where you know. Oh, people, his... people feel aggrieved and leave one place to another and no, still no. get tickets. We uh, see that happening every name? other election well, cycle. What, so what's the what difference? Has never happened, what has never happened to any other political party except the PDP, particularly in Lagos State, is that people who were not in the party from the beginning, who had been in other political associations or worked with other political parties or associated with other with uh, uh, political personalities known to belong to other political parties, always seem to get the government to get. This would never happen in a Bible, it would never happen in the Frost River State, it would never happen in Delta State. It would be, the only place, the only other place where this has happened was in those states. And even the circumstances of that caused a revolution to start. So that it was that revolution that brought in. Uh, uh, over second, who crossed over from the other side. So, you know, at the end of the day, the Lagos PDP situation is unique in its uh, absurdity. Let me just call that. So, we have that situation, and I, I foresaw what was going to happen, and it did, and it, you know, depended into, you know, the spectacle of pantomime, and that's all what politics is about. It, it, it's about working for the people. It's about, you know, in Lagos State's case, it's about digging us out of a very deep hole that we've been dug into by uh, 23 years of senior wisdom. Mm -hmm. We need to get out of that as quickly as possible. Now, let's talk about the we're by joking around. Let's move back to something that you said. Let's go back to the Labour Party. You did talk about the sympathies uh, that of Ni the average Nigerian that the Peter B ticket is enjoying as we speak. Now, for many people, and I've asked this question to many who have moved from you know different parties to the Labour Party in different parts of the country. Um, so in moving to the Labour Party, especially for someone like you, uh, who has been in different political parties. Um, are you hoping that the sympathies of Nigerians for the Labour Party, especially Mr. Peter Obi, might trickle down to every other person who holds a ticket in the Labour Party across the country? Is that the hope for which people are moving to the party for, especially you, sir? I don't know, but, you know, I'll tell you this. In Lagos, um, the Labour Party has managed to, uh, to attract some high quality people. Some extremely high quality people. And the, the, the debate for who was going to be the governorship uh, candidate in Lagos has been quite intense. And I like it like that. This, this is the sort of um, the dialectic that must happen you know, for quality candidates to, to emerge. I, I want to believe and uh, hope uh, that there's a certain young man in Labour, I'm not going to name it now. Oh, but he gets the ticket because that's somebody I can certainly work for. And we need a new generation, let's be frank. You know? And in today's world, believe me, the younger is better. 
Could this young could you this young man be by the Vivo R Rhodes? Is that who you're you referring really to? You really do want to dig what's out of my mouth, don't you? It's just a question. Is that the young person that you're making reference to? I will might not confirm or deny. Let, let's move on. Now, you mentioned about the situation within the party. Again, we see that before now, a certain person was um, announced as the presidential candidate, the governorship candidate, I beg your pardon, for the party here in Lagos. But as we speak, there is some form of, you know, um, confusion. You have decided to call it uh, something that you like. It's uh, intense. Um, but is that not also something that uh, is similar to what's happening in the P PDP, even though it might have it might be a type or a, a shadow of what's happening in the Labour Party? Um, but I mean, this is almost the the eleventh hour. Why have this kind of confusion for a party that you say is supposedly to bring hope to Lagosians? I know you journalists like something. That is what your profession thrives on. I understand that. But I'll tell you this, this announcement that you claim was made, was it made by the party? To, my, to the best of my knowledge, the Labour Party has not announced a candidate for Lagos. So I think we should go back and look at this so-called announcement and find out who made it. Was it the was it the Labour Party? Those are the only two people. Those, those are the only two organizations, to the best of my mind, unless the law had changed, that can announce a candidate for the Labour Party as a political party in Lagos. And neither of them have made, have made a statement for that regard. Interesting. So, so there's no confusion. So wh when do we expect to hear this announcement for the Labour Party going forward? Well, I personally expect that within the next 48 hours or so, we will hear a definitive statement from the Labour Party leadership as to who the candidate, the gubernatorial candidate for Lagos, actually. Uh, All right, let's talk about what you are doing in the Labour Party. Do you intend to hold a ticket uh, for what office and, and why? I mean, I've seen you, I remember in 2019, you ran for a governorship. Uh, again, uh, we saw you try to run for this. You ran for on the PDP for a senatorial ticket. Um, what would you be running for now in the um, Labour Party? Do you intend to run for any office or you just want to be a member? Well, the, of the, only party? Reason that would, the only thing that would make me run for office will be if the electorate decided to fund that adventure. Now, if they don't, I'm quite happy to sit down and support whoever it is that the party presents for every office, presidential, governorship, senatorial, house of reps, because we need a complete change in the period. We need a complete change. Lagos especially needs that thing. Because you see, Lagos is the fulcrum of the Nigerian economy, isn't it? 55% of the VAT that's generated in Nigeria is generated in Lagos. More than of all the banks in Nigeria, every one of them has at least fifty percent of their branches in Lagos State. That tells that the engine room of the Nigerian economy is Lagos, and it's been stifled for twenty-three years. And that has to stop. And, and how, how do you hope that the Labour Party would be able to break this so-called shackle? Um, being that, again, you do still have on one it's hand... It's not a so-called shackle. It's a very real shackle indeed. The, market, the millions of market women and traders in Lagos will tell you that the shackle is real. Okay? The millions of uh, taxpayers in Lagos will tell you, yourself included, will tell you that the shackle is real. Okay? It's not so-called. Please do not, do not even try to trivialize the suffering that people are going through in Lagos. It's real, it's very real. We spend more than seven hours of our waking day in traffic, just commuting from and to work. We don't have running water, we don't have electricity. The, lo the local governments are virtually comatose. And the state governments cannot fill in the gaps of all the uh, powers and responsibilities that as you serve from the local government. So you have piles of rubbish all over the place, 
serious health issues across the state, the hospitals are inadequate. And you have a government that keeps running around, you know, in, in, in vinyl clothing and waxing lyrical about a, a real man that, 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 was, that was designed by somebody else that he's now coming to implement, you know, and maybe, 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 God willing, they just might finish the red line this time, but the blue line, which has been under construction since 2009, remains unfinished, and there is no end in sight. How does the Labour Party hope to... I'm so sorry to talk over you. How does the Labour Party intend to take you know, to break this cycle that you are making reference to, to take over Lagos, because this at some point was seen as a two-horse race. But now that the Labour Party is in the picture, how does the Labour Party hope to break grounds, knowing that on the one hand in you have the ruling party and on the other hand you have the opposition, which is the PDP, how do you intend to break ground? How do you intend to let, take let over? Me, let me reset the reality a little. In Lagos, it is indeed a two-horse race. But the two horses are the Labour Party and the ruling party. Really? Yes. Because the millions of youth in Lagos that will vote for the Labour Party, that will stand by their votes, that will ensure that the votes are transmitted, are just waiting for the election. And then you will understand that what is happening, the obidati 2023 revolution is very real. It's not just an honor movement. You still need rallies in Benin. You send the one in Bafia, in Nasara State. You send rallies, on impromptu rallies that just pop up like that all over the country. But more and more of them will keep happening. And you will see very real people on the ground. You know, people can't really move around as easily as we need to in Nigeria anymore because of banditry. Terrorism, kidnapping, and so on. So, the crowd that you see in any city, they're from there, they're real, they weren't important. Mm. Now, I, I, I like the idea that, you know, there have been rallies, there have been um, people who are coming together for um, and making the PTRB thing a movement of sorts. But much more than the rallies, much more than the social media conversations, how do these rallies and conversations online and offline um, amount to votes? Because this is a game of numbers. It's not necessarily about <laughs> talking tough or, um, you know, having a movement. It's about how many people will come out to vote. So I'm interested. What is the Labour Party doing to make sure that just not just having a movement is enough, but how they will make sure that every single person who is part of a movement comes out on election day, because that's what counts. Who do you think those 12 million new registrants or PVCs are planning to vote for? You think they're planning to vote for the PDP? You, you perhaps have some imagination that they might be wanting to vote for the same APC that held us all down for the last seven years or so, that has plunged us into a pool of debt that we can't even see the bottom yet. No. Everybody wants the Labour Party. Everybody with two brain cells between their ears knows that APC is a no no. No matter how many times they say APC, we know come. The truth is, I'm not going to come. Nigeria, Lokon. Eko, Lokon. And that's the truth. And finally, to every person who's watching and um, maybe still making up their mind, um, what's the message of hope that they should hold on to, especially for Lagos State? Um, again, like I said, um, we saw what happened during the local government elections. We saw that Almost nobody showed up to the polling units. You could count on one hand how many people showed up to the polling unit. And this, some would say, would have been a litmus test to how many of us would show up to the polls to vote in the next election. Um, I mean, Oshun State, it, for so many, would be a great you know, um, showing for what might happen. But then, we're talking Lagos. How many, because we, in Lagos State, we have a lot more people in the middle class 
um, and we hardly see those people show up to the polls. Uh, is there a change of mindset going around that might get those people to come out and vote? Because you talk about new entrants and these are young people. But what about the middle class? These guys who were supposed to know better. The new entrant into the electoral space in Lagos are actually made up of the hitherto silent middle classes and their parents and their children, youths. Okay? Now, if you go on social media, you'll find this to be true. And what was just on social media has now manifested in terms of PBC registrations. And if INEC does their job and stops throwing away people's PBC or trying to deny 7 million people their PBC, then yes, we will see a change. If they do not, if they attempt to rig this election before it actually happens, Hmm. Let me not say much. Okay. I just hope that we still have a country by the time the 2023 election is over. We will definitely have a country. But I, I just want to quickly push you on something before I let you go, um, because we're almost out of time. Uh, let's talk about the issue of insecurity. Now, it has hit close to home. No, normally, when we talk about terrorism and insecurity, banditry, um, it looks a bit far-fetched. But then we recently had a red alert about you know, um, insecurity coming down south. And, of course, the Commissioner of Police in Lagos State had addressed the issue, saying um, that they're on top of the matter and uh, there was no need for us to be alarmed. Um, how well do you think that the governments in the South, especially uh, Lagos State, is handling or dealing with the issue of insecurity? Now, we, there are people who've complained about under the bridge, uh, around, uh, on the mainland, even here on the island, uh, several people who just leave and uh, leave or sleep under the bridge. We also have the issue of certain people who have, um, you know, been seen in certain areas, not doing anything, just sitting around in groups. And many have called on the state government, but have you seen a swift reaction in dealing with these issues? Because these, these are the things that um, gradually become um, terrorist cells. Well, I'm glad that uh, some of you in the sports space of the realm are beginning to wake up to your responsibilities as far as this terrorism thing goes. I saw it as far back as 2007, and I wrote the then, no, 2008, sorry, and I wrote the then governor, Governor uh, Barasuni Rajifashala, about what I observed. And I recommended some things. I wrote him a rather long email, and I made a comprehensive recommendation that would um, pull the rug from under the feet of a certain sector of the potential terrorists, because I, I could see what they were just based on uh, a rough uh, observation of their age ranges and the fact that most of the people that I saw were young males of military age. They were trooping into Lagos on a daily basis in their hundreds of thousands as far back as 2008. So I've watched with trepidation as government after government has treated this matter with clean blood. And some of the governments that did respond, responded, you know, in ways that perhaps left a little bit to the desire. I mean, the issue of deporting Nigerians or deporting people from Lagos to their home state, I don't know. I'm not sure that that's perhaps the best way to handle these sorts of issues. Or the issue of... Um, Season and crushing others. I don't know. Um, we, we can do better. We can do this. We can do these things in a more civilized way and still achieve the same end of removing any undesirables from circulation. We can do that, but we can do it. We can do it in a more civilized way. And I, I did recommend, like I said, I recommended to the uh, Excellency Anthony Rajifashola back then, um, and his response made me realize that it was totally people, you know, not necessary. Like maybe the best thing would be to try and become governor myself, because remember in 2008, I had not contested for a position yet. 
Well, I want to say thank you. Uh, Mr. Babatunde Badamosi is uh, now a member of the Labour Party and he used to be a PDP stalwart. Thank you so much for speaking with us on the show. Thank you very much for having me, Miriam. Thank right. you. All right, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the postponed PDP National Executive Council meeting and factions within the party seeking the chairman's removal. Stay with us. We'll be right back.